Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. Each week, we offer you brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W E T W A R E M E D I A dot com. Today we're sharing an excerpt from the audiobook Stop Overreacting Effective Strategies for Calming Your Emotions, written by marriage and family therapist Dr. Judith Siegel. This audiobook helps you identify your emotional triggers, discover a new way of processing impulsive thoughts and feelings and understand how your emotions can undermine your ability to think rationally in moments of crisis and stress. You'll learn how to neutralize overwhelming emotions and choose healthy responses instead of flying off the handle. In this excerpt, Dr. Siegel discusses an important first step in calming your emotions, developing emotional awareness by learning to precisely identify your feelings. Developing Emotional Awareness We all have different emotional comfort zones. When a powerful emotion overcomes us, we may be so overwhelmed that our first response is to run away from the experience through numbing, shutting down, seeking distractions, or using anger to expel it. However, the process of identifying and naming the emotion can stimulate the left brain, right brain circuits and point us in the right direction. Many psychologists have suggested that it is easier to work with feelings after you learn how to approach them. I have worked with many intelligent, successful people who have learned to survive through their skill at analyzing problems, but whose over-reliance on thinking is accompanied by an under-reliance on feeling. A rational stance that doesn't incorporate feelings won't make you happy or fulfilled and very often creates problems in relationships. I explain to my clients that their years spent thinking about problems can be compared to developing expertise in hiking and navigating hilly terrain. Some have become accomplished mountain climbers and have acquired the boots, ropes, and ice axes that help them excel. But in this analogy, their feeling world is the water, and they must now learn to swim. Their mountaineering gear will not help them here and will likely hold them back. Learning to swim requires new skills and the confidence that you can learn to do it. Experiencing emotions might be uncomfortable, but the discomfort is short-lived and unlikely to cause any harm. If you were emotionally overwhelmed when you were a child, you might become automatically anxious when your emotions begin to stir. But by spending time learning to identify and explore your feeling world, you will become less uncomfortable and more curious when you find yourself becoming emotional. To learn how to tolerate feelings, you will need to learn how to identify them. I have organized feeling states in ways that may help you dig a little deeper and stretch your awareness. When you feel angry, you may also be feeling Afraid, agitated, appalled, bitter, disappointed, exasperated, helpless, irritated, let down, offended, provoked, riled, vicious, aggravated, annoyed, betrayed, cranky, disgusted, frustrated, hostile, jealous, nervous, pessimistic, repulsed, tense. When you feel happy, you may also be feeling accomplished, charmed, delighted, enthusiastic, glad, peppy, validated, amused, cheerful, elated, excited, joyful, proud. When you are content, you may also be feeling appreciative, fortunate, relaxed, calm, reflective, soothed. 
When you feel hurt, you may also be feeling cheated, deprived, diminished, insulted, lonely, persecuted, snubbed, defeated, deserted, forgotten, isolated, neglected, slighted, upset. When you feel inadequate, you may also be feeling diminished, incompetent, pessimistic, useless, helpless, inferior, powerless. The first step in connecting brain circuits is to become attuned to your emotional world. When you hear a word that represents a feeling, you are using your intellectual understanding and activating your left brain. To become comfortable with the feeling world, it is important to register the physical and emotional experience that occurs in your right brain so that you can comprehend what you are feeling in that moment. The process of knowing your feelings is such a fundamental and necessary part of learning to stop overreacting that several exercises are presented here to get you started. Pay closer attention to each word in the preceding list of feelings. Ask yourself if you can remember a time when you experienced each feeling. Dr. Beth Jacobs suggests that starting a journal for writing exercises is a wonderful way to help you get acquainted with different feelings during times that you are relaxed. To expand awareness and tolerance, Dr. Jacobs recommends tackling each feeling one at a time in your journal or notebook. She suggests one exercise that is designed to help you understand that feelings occur in increments. Concentrate on one feeling and write about a time when you felt that way slightly. Then write about a time when you had a more intense experience with that feeling. Finally, write about a time when you felt that way very strongly. We sometimes need to remind ourselves that not all feelings occur in the extreme and that even if they feel dangerous in the moment, we can not tolerate them once we create a safe distance. Another exercise Dr. Jacobs developed helps you become familiar with feelings by approaching them in a new way. When you are in an emotional neutral zone, choose one of the feelings that you want to understand better from the previous list. To increase awareness of how you experience that particular feeling, ask yourself the following questions. If it was a color, what would it be? If it was a landscape, what would it be? If it was a piece of music, what would it be? You may not realize it, but there is already a strong connection between your senses and your feeling world. The next time you are watching a scary movie or TV show, pay attention to the music that is used in the scenes that create the most suspense. Look more closely at the smells that are used in aromatherapy or bath products that make you feel relaxed or invigorated. Our senses and feeling world can be mutually informative. If you take the time to acquaint yourself with each of the feelings on the previous list, you will have accomplished an important first step toward learning how to swim in the ocean of your feeling world. When you lose your fear of the water, you will learn to relax and enjoy it instead of fighting to stay above it. Rather than struggle to keep your eyes focused on the mountaintop, which is more familiar, you will learn that there is beauty and wonder in the waters you have avoided for so long. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Stop Overreacting, Effective Strategies for Calming Your Emotions. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate it and review it. And please share it with friends who might also enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E 
M-E-D-I-A dot com.